Destination mark. Hey guys, how's it going? Marcella here. Welcome back to the Bandicast post launch episode three of post launch. Got another returning guest. Uh, oh, sorry, episode four. I forgot I'm filming this a little out of order. <laughs> I already missed up my intro. Awesome. Not gonna restart. Today I have with me my next <laughs> returning guest, which is Still Game Master. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh crap. Uh, <laughs> my uh, headphone jack came out just slightly, so like I barely heard you there. But I'm sure you're fuck cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll, I'll speak a bit louder. Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? I need to sit closer to Hope you're doing well. <laughs> oh, man. Off to a good start. Um, yeah, I'm doing fine. How about yourself? <laughs> We're <fine>. professionals. <laughs> so how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Um, I hope you are doing well. Yeah. You've, you've gotten up reasonably early to do this. I appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, no problem. Time zones are fun. Um, <laughs> so, uh, as I did with uh, Miharu... Uh, for all returning guests, we're just going to basically riff on Crash 4 and our experiences with it. So, uh, everyone got used to who you were and your questions about the history of Crash and all that, um, in the last time uh, you appeared here. So, for this one, we're just going to riff. I only have one question for us to start off, which is, how much did you enjoy Crash 4, and what are your overall thoughts and opinions on the game, uh, like your least and, uh, your favorite and least favorite aspects? Uh, well, I loved it. Um, and sure, I have a little bit of bias. Sure, some of my friends worked on the game. Sure, it's yeah. my favorite Crash game. Sure, I mean, whatever. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I just, yeah, no, I, I absolutely adored it. Um, it, it was everything I wanted from a Crash game and more. And it is the perfect way to create a sequel that's clearly two decades later. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how do you create a game that feels like it's two decades old, but also feels so new and so wonderful to everyone who's new to the franchise and also who's a returning fan? Or like, like, there's a lot that Toys Bob had to tackle, and they nailed it. Like, absolutely nailed it. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, so the difficulty is quite high, um, but I think that's the same for any uh Crash game really like if you look at the earliest Crash games there are some brutal stuff in all of them um <laughs> yeah. so it's like it, it's nothing new yeah I mean I guess like they they raised the bar a little bit here and there but like it, it's still nothing too new um so it, it wasn't uh, yeah I, I just I, I had a good time with it uh frustrations here and there aside um I think I think like my my least favorite thing although I also love it are some of the crate placements. Like, some of them are just vile. <laughs> That's true, But at the yep. same time, I love some of them just because they're just ridiculous. Um, so, I mean, it's, it, it, it depends on who you're asking. Some people will absolutely love it. Some people will absolutely hate it. Some people will be, eh, it doesn't bother me. So, I mean, yeah. But, uh, oh God, what things, the thing I love most, uh, level design. Because... Mm. The levels are just phenomenal. I don't think there's a bad one in there, and that's saying something. <laughs> uh, but like, I also I've mentioned this in a couple of videos in the past. Like, I love the verticality of the game. Crash games just sort of doesn't do verticality after Crash One. Yeah, they just get rid of it, with the exception of a couple bounce pads um, in Crash Three, or like you swim upwards for two seconds. Um, like you, there's, there's just nothing. Um, and it's, it's actually done in a really creative, uh, engaging way. Um, and, and that's like, uh, <laughs> dragging on. Like, I know a lot of people hate that level because of the blue gem and I love it <laughs> because it's so well designed. It, it's just brilliant. So yeah, like stuff, stuff like that is, is incredible. Um, and yeah, I mean like. It, again, it's it depends on who you are. Some people love it, some people hate it. But that final level, man, <laughs> it's so good. It's so so good. I want more. I crave the pain. Give it to me. <laughs> That's the one thing. Yeah, that I really love about Crash Four is how it it 
it really tries to strike some sort of a balance between just going through the levels at your leisure and then when you even think to yourself in any aspect about it, whether it's, I want to go for all crates, or I want to go, by extension, for all gems, or I want to get at least all the flashback tapes. At one point, when you're on your journey to do that, you're going to run into some uh, challenge, and they didn't really uh, pull any punches with that one. Like, they really made sure, like, you need to think outside the box, and, and no pun intended, but, you know, you also need to make sure, like, that you really explore certain areas of certain levels, because... Shit's hidden in areas where you can't even use the camera to, like, move around and see where it's at, you know? And, like, <laughs> that that can get kind of... I, I think that maybe, in my opinion, that balance could have been struck a little bit finer because there are some instances where it might feel like a smidge unfair. It's like, okay, if no yeah. one told me or hinted that something's, like, in this area of, like, say, Run It By You or whatever. How would I supposed yes, to know that that's Run It By You is, I think, the biggest exception. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was glad. I was watching your playthrough and several other people's, like, streams. I'm glad that that was level where people started to go, okay, then it's starting to get a little weird now <laughs> with the difficulty. How yeah, I mean, like, the thing is, if it didn't have the six crates b below the stairs where you couldn't see them, yeah, I would be fine. Like, even... Even the, the hidden gem, as insane as it is, <laughs> I don't mind it. Like True, I, yeah. I mean, I, like, I, I did look for it for, like, an hour and a half, maybe more. <laughs> but I still, like, I still was just like, okay, that is really well hidden. I mean, it's in the name. It's a hidden gem. It, they yeah. nailed that part. <laughs> like, you also have instances in, uh, like, say, in, uh, I think it's the inverted version of Dino Dash, where they just kind of stuck it in a crevice before the first Dino Chase sequence. And it's like, okay, I understand it's in that little oh yeah cavern log thing right before you uh, destroy the bones to start the chase. But it's like, th that area isn't even there in because the it's on the left side if you're an uh, yeah. inverted. So I checked the right side of the, the main level and there's no hole there. So I'm like, okay. So they added a spot that's super like, you don't even know it's there. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it is, there, there's some really, really well hidden stuff. Um, <laughs> I like, so again, like some, some of it was better than others, but uh, it was just, it was just fun to go through. Um, I, I'm very excited to see, uh, if there is going to be any more to the game, given that there's, you know, a couple of, uh, I guess, questions that still haven't been answered. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be cool to see what happens uh, in the coming months. Uh, and of course, I mean, it's not just Crash 4. There's also the fact that it's the 25th anniversary. Um, mm -hmm. And there's also Spyro 4 in the works. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's a good <laughs> set of years ahead for uh, Crash and Spyro, which is very exciting. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, that Spyro thing, I didn't know that that was even... Who or where was the artwork found before? I think it was... I think people knew about that right before the art book started releasing to everyone. Because I got it, and I was looking through it, and I'm like, oh, okay, there it is. But I knew about it ahead of time. Who, um, was this one from the team, or did someone, somewhere just find, or is it in the game, like, the environmental concept I art? think it's, no, I think it was just the art book. I think the art book probably released to someone early, um, okay. or shipped oh! early, or whatever. Uh-huh. I think Amazon had the previews where you could like uh hover your cursor over the book and you can oh, see like, really? it was something like that I, some books do that on amazon it's like oh look through the book before you buy it and if in case it anything catches your interest and i think that image was in there it was something oh, that like that interesting it was something like that because that image that uh concept art in particular was shown off both ahead of time and people were like oh, mm. there's a spyro and at first it was like oh cool and then they saw the little four even though it's the crash four um, that they use in the logo, but still, it's like, why would it be placed under Spyro's name if not to be some kind of subtle hint? And it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the one thing I can appreciate, though, about um, the difficulty, too, and how things were hidden, just to jump on that really quickly, I wanted to say this quick piece. Um, as a veteran, uh, for us being veterans, too, like, it's kind of a give and take on, like, how we can particularly critique the difficulty, because I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to 
do when it comes to hidden stuff a more crash a more crash two approach because some things like the uh, blue color gem is like immediately or rather um directly referenced um and and pulled from but like i had this conversation i think with miharu about like oh but like I critiqued like the the tips and the loading screens of Ensign and how they try to hint at the ELD like oh the, 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 something is fake in this level and it's like okay it's the it's the wall to get the green gem but then it's like as a kid playing the OG game you had nothing you had no idea that wall was fake or why there was a random room with filled with nitros and even if you try to like make your way through the nitros nothing still was even hinting necessarily that the wall could be like walked through <laughs> yeah i mean it's uh the loading screens and insane i didn't love because the tips i felt was too uh just too handholdy but also the loading yeah. screen was just a bit bare bones like i really like the loading screens for having like a picture of the level in uh in crash 4 uh they look really yeah. nice yeah oh yeah like the art too. for every level is just phenomenal so like yeah show it off <laughs> tease us before we enter <laughs> I, I like too that some of those uh, images were taken a bit earlier in development because the nitros that are in frame still have just the n on them mm. so that's pretty funny <laughs> oh that's interesting uh i do remember when i did the one with lou he uh told me that that was one of their ultimate um hurdles they were trying to figure out how to get over was how much because I, I brought something like that up to him in that band of cast and he said well the problem the issue we were having, or rather the the um, challenge to us, was how far do you go in hinting at the player that there's a thing here or that something is this. So for certain hidden, different hidden things, whether it's hidden crates or hidden color gems, whatever, some of them are like flat out given to you if you're paying attention, like the yellow gem and run it by you. It's like literally in frame, almost yeah. the focal point of the the shot when the camera's panning up to show Crash, or Coco, whoever you're playing as. Um, but if you're not paying attention, you'll miss it. And then you got stuff like the Hidden Gem or certain crates that's like, okay, there's like no direction telling you, nothing is hinting that something's there. So it gives the player like a an OG Crash experience where it's like just, if, if you're exploring, you're curious enough, and you end up finding it, then you found it, you know? There are some crates, like uh, a real grind, that uh, show up a lot better uh, in the inverted uh, version. Yeah. Uh, which is really interesting. Um, and it's a shame that not every crate that is super hard sort of gives you that benefit. Uh, mm. But it is it is really cool that some levels do that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a really interesting um, way to... Uh, design the game like how, how did you feel about the uh the inverted stages because i i know some people really hated how some of them looked because it hurt them it hurt their eyes it didn't <laughs> affect me at all mm -hmm. um i don't know why um but like it certainly like it, it didn't i i wish for every uh stage or like each world did something that drastically changed the gameplay like i loved how the first world had the like echo location thing and um yeah the bayou had a different uh speed uh and stuff like that it was actually really cool um and then for dinosaur world it was just like okay it's like crayons like it, didn't, <laughs> it didn't really change anything kids coloring book <laughs> yeah pretty much it was it, i mean i i, I quite I quite liked how it looked, even though it did hurt people's eyes. Like, I thought it was kind of interesting, but it's just not for everyone, and that's fair enough. Um, but what I do like doing is um, on the PS4 or PS5, you can sort of, like, invert the sc uh, the screen colour. And if you invert it, it's actually really cool. <laughs> I never <laughs> like, tried Some that. of them look really great. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, in inverting games is just really silly, because it looks so, so weird. <laughs> um, but it is obviously inverting uh, is there to help certain people, um, and that's fantastic that it's an option uh, within the the system. Uh, but yeah, just it is very fun to uh, to mess around with the inverted modes um, uh, on your PS4, PS5, and just see what games look like with them. 
You, you know, actually, it's funny that you say that too, because that was a thought that I had when I heard inverted mode. I thought one of the filters would be like a photo negative mode where everything was just flipped like that. Um, mm. I mean, maybe that maybe that was something that they thought of and they were like, okay, maybe this will hurt people's eyes. Let's not do it because there's just so much detail in everything. Um, yes, uh, the 11th Dimension, sorry, no, not the 11th Dimension, the Echopist Dimensions uh, filter was the one that I heard the most that it was starting to bother people's eyes. It didn't do anything for me either. Um, I like all the filters, and I do also love that some of them do give some slight gameplay changes, like you have to constantly spin or, uh, slide in, uh, Root Awakening or, um, uh, Insanity Peak, so you can keep that location going. Uh, so that was pretty, and I think every time you uh, smack a crate too, you'll uh, create the effect. So that was pretty cool. I love uh, the um, uh, oh Jesus, the swamp levels. I'm forgetting the name right now of the world. Yeah, um, uh, Mystic Marsh or whatever. No, that's that's Spyro. Uh, Marsh, that one. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those um, levels. That that filter is super cool. I I love it a lot. Um, the fact that I thought because some of those levels that I like, uh, no dilla dallying and uh, running by you, some of the ones I just really don't like out of the whole bunch of levels in the game. So I was like, oh no, what the fast filter is going to make it like hell to go through. Not necessarily. I mean, the way they hid certain uh, hidden gems in those two levels in particular was kind of, again, like there's no real direction. You have to like just kind of wing it on one of them in particular that I'm thinking of. But like for the most part, it actually didn't give me that much of a hassle, especially because when trying to perfect the regular versions of those levels, like, I started developing certain techniques, or actually, I saw certain techniques. I think I saw them from you, actually, when you freaking flipped yourself around during that little waterfall part at the end of Running Bayou. I think that was you oh, that yeah. did it. And I was like, you can fucking do that? <laughs> so I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm tearing my hair out trying to do it right because you only have, like, half a second to no, hit all those crates man. correctly like no i i've never tried to do it the normal way that seems <laughs> insane <laughs> the, no oh my god don't, don't man. make it harder on yourself i it's interesting like i didn't find the hidden gems um uh that bad on the inverted version of uh runner by because like like that was when I've played through the normal version of Run It By, I was just like, oh, why is there nothing here? Like, it feels like there should be something here. And then when I <laughs> played, like, the inverted version, I was like, oh my god, wait a minute. Is it. <gasps> yeah! <laughs> it felt so good. I was just, I, it felt like I did that a couple of times. I did it there, I did it on, um. Uh. Oh no, what's it called? I love the bloody thing where you're in the ball being chased by the giant machine. What the hell's it called? No. Oh, um, was it the, the, the truck one, truck stopped, yes. or hit the road, hit the road? Thank you, <laughs> thank you, yes, that one, yeah, the hit the road, I was just like, feels like you, you can go under here, feels like there should be something there, and then when I got to that point, yeah. in the inverted version, I was like, oh wait, didn't I, yes! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was, like, st stuff when I worked out where they were, like, I don't know, 50 hours prior felt really good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like that that kind of that kind of stuff is what made the game just elevated for me. So, for, what did you think of the uh the 2D crate levels? The uh the flashback tapes cuz I loved them. Yeah, no, they were really cool. Um for a good chunk of them I didn't have the hardest time, but the last, like, two in both crashes, and especially Coco's segments, were, like, the ones where it's like, okay, this is the difficulty yeah. they were basically promising. I thought, like, all of them were going to be like that, except for, like, maybe the first three or so. Um, no, I like them a lot, because I was going into it already being like, okay, they said these were going to be some of the toughest levels, you have to really make sure that, you know, everything's throwback so you can tell, okay, they're taking, like, a straight-up kind of Crash 1 approach... Even if you think back to Crash 1, um, some of the crate placements in uh, the bonus rounds, that's kind of what it reminded me of. So I'm like, okay, as long as I take uh, an approach to these levels with that kind of mentality, I shouldn't have the toughest or the the um, yeah the toughest time with them. And for the most part, I didn't. What I love that they do, and I was kind of actually hoping they do this in some levels, like main storyline levels. But I was hoping that they would do it a little 
bit more in certain circumstances where they really make you test everything about Crash and Coco's moveset. So, like, everything from your hang time in the air when you slide off of something to, like, having to time crate bounces and um, it's just certain things like that. Uh, and how they built puzzles around that, which I thought was, like, really cool, because no other Crash game did it to that extent, not even the uh, the OG games. So, uh, there are certain bits, like, in, I think it was, um, not Crash Compactor, I think it was the, f I think it was Hit the Road, where, um, to get the hidden gem in the mainline version, you yes. have to, like, slide under the, the nitro, and I was like, how the hell do you do this? I'm like, wait a minute. And then I tried it, I'm like, Oh my god, they really wanted you to like use your hang time and then jump over my like, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's like that's the moment where if you weren't aware already, the game's going to be quite challenging. <laughs> like it's it, it's certainly cuz it's it like it's quite clear what it is you have to do, but like if you don't really understand every mechanic about the game, then then you're not going to be able to get that straight away. I think the the level that probably teaches you that the best is Dino Dash because of that one yes. section. Uh -huh. um, uh, and because I'd played the demo, like I, I knew that the game was going to sort of throw that kind of thing at you. So I was like, yeah. okay, this is what you have to do. Brilliant. <laughs> Love that. Now, it was interesting with the uh, the flashback tapes because um, like what I loved about it is like the first one's pretty straightforward. Um and the, you're like, okay, like it's it's precision movement, but it's not challenging. Like the, they none of the crates are hidden. Then the second one, like you go through, it's like, okay, it's just more precision movement. There's like a one section which is a little bit challenging. And then you get to the end, it's like, I'm missing two crates. Where did I miss? <laughs> and then like it's you realize that you destroying crates of near the nitros was a bad idea, and you were supposed to destroy the nitros, then use the bounce pad, and it's just like, okay, that's brilliant. <laughs> I see what you're doing. You are teaching me very early on that I will suffer if I don't pay attention. <laughs> um, and that's, or if I don't do like an awkward workaround to the normal way. And like, I love, um, I love that there's so much creativity in like the, the, the snake, uh, the nitro snake or the, yeah. uh, the line of solid crates that are on a timer and stuff. And like all, all, those gimmicky levels are brilliant. They're so much fun. <laughs> I was gonna um, bring those. What up, I love yeah. is, what I love is the, uh, the the movement of falling, spinning, breaking crates, and then jumping after that spin. Yep, like that is some insane tech, <laughs> but it's so fun. And like when you realise you can do that, you're just like okay. We're in. We're we're ascending a higher plane here. This is <laughs> this is something else. But here's the thing about that. I love that it th those levels were tailored for the vets first and foremost. And anyone who's a newcomer and maybe just played Insane and then Nitro Field and only experienced the post or the um yeah the post hiatus stuff probably went okay, damn this is hard. What the hell do they expect of me here? But then I think that because it was kind of first and foremost or primarily tailored to, to us, those tells are a little more. At least for me, I felt that those tells were a little more. Uh, apparent like because mm. i already kind of you know how sometimes you just you're, you're playing a crash game and you just kind of are bored or whatever and you start like jumping around and spinning at the same time and you're just like pressing buttons and realizing oh you can kind of do this so like in experimenting out of like either pure boredom or just trying to figure out how crash can move even more than what the game what, like previous games have already told you he could do you, you realize these little things about how crash moves and what you can do with spinning and jumping like at the same time or falling from a jump and spinning and then jumping again. And I think that in some other Crash games, because it's not built with, they're not built with that kind of tech in mind, if you're trying to do that in other Crash games, um, you'll probably just not be able to spin and double jump after or the the wait time between a jump, a single jump and then a double jump, won't really register and you can't double jump after some time. No, they, they made sure that you had, those little ticks were uh, flushed out, especially for the flashback tapes because they take advantage of that. So when I, for one, was looking at those little bits where I'm like, okay, I think I know what they want me to do, and I did it, and it's those little tiny bits where you have to make sure you hit like one crate and not the other, and you have to like double jump to make it happen. I was able to read those tells pretty early on. 
Um, because I felt like, okay, they're asking like the littlest bits from you, but it's really cool the way they did it. Yeah. I love, um, I think it's the second to last level where you have to slide under a bouncing nitro. Oh yeah. (laughs) It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. (laughs) I just, uh, like, and I, I don't know if you ever pulled it off. Like every so often you manage to frame perfectly jump off an exploding nitro just like oh, oh yeah yes yeah <laughs> i've i've gained god's gift yes <laughs> this is it i like it too that this is like the only game you can do that in because again they had to like i think um freaking de- code the nitro crates a bit differently because of the fact that they knew you have to you have the ability to jump on them in certain circumstances so they just kind of mm. made all the crates bounceable for like half a second but of course, it's stretched out longer when you actually need to do it. But then you got that, yeah. yeah, those little golden instances where you can just do it by accident. And you go, oh, oh shit, what? <laughs> okay, I'm not dead. This is awesome. <laughs> um, oh, or how about those uh, arrow crates that turn into nitros after like a certain yeah. amount of hops on them? Oh my god, that's so cool. It- it'll be really cool to see um, what. They do in the future. I'd like to see more of these types of levels. I'd like to see them flash out um, the different types of crates. But because I mean, like they've they've done a lot. But I bet this is just scratching the surface. I bet they can create a lot more uh, variations that will make us all suffer. <laughs> I I want that, please. <laughs> Did you just make Super Crash Maker? Make your own. So you're f- your favorite level was uh, the first level, right? Uh, from the... Oh, did you, you watch the top ten? I did. Yay! <laughs> um, I did. You didn't have Cortex Castle in there, you fiend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, actually, because that level is not as bad as... Okay, well, that's a little weird to say. As bad as everyone says it is. Like... It took, granted, it took me an hour on stream, going through it blind for the first time, to beat the ending gauntlet, but when I did it, because I already knew ahead of time, I think Miharu and other people in the chat told me, oh, be careful, be aware, be prepared, because the ending part of Cortex Castle is hell, and I'm like, I've gone through hell and other Crash games before, and this one too, so we'll just see what I have to do, and then I was like, okay, they want you to use everyone at once, and certain you know, one after another repeatedly, and I'm like, okay, I kind of figured they would do this, and then I went through it. And I'm like trying to figure it out, and I was like really determined, so I didn't rage or anything. I'm just like, fuck, okay, try again. Let me see if I can do it. And then I got through it. I'm like, oh my god, it's like the most satisfying, freaking feeling ever to get through that last bit. <laughs> Have you done the uh, the relics for it? No, 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 I haven't. I that's where I'm at right now. I haven't hundred and six percent in it yet. I still got relics and um perfect relics. So time trial and perfect mm. relics. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's once once you like because the thing is once you beat it once, it, you understand how it works. Like mm-hmm. even though you may not have perfected it, you, you get it. Like it it's it's in there. And yeah. it's getting like the the relic itself um isn't actually that hard um the platinum gives you a lot of leeway um and like once you like assuming you're on pace by the time you get to that section like uh, like you'll you'll be fine like it gives you quite a lot of accuracy through the stage if you have a couple you'll be good like it's it's pretty yeah. straightforward like you your your brain just gets it um it's so fun like that final gauntlet is one of the best platforming challenges i've ever played <laughs> yeah i love it it, like I was, uh, I was replaying a couple levels uh, for this, and um, I was just like, I'm gonna do the time trial for Codex Castle. Uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna play that uh, and see how it goes. Um, and I was actually keeping up with the Toys of Bob time um, for the <laughs> most part, uh, and I nearly beat it, but I thought I had an extra Akuaku. Uh, and I didn't, and I went through a laser grid. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut ahead. It's like, oh wait, no, I miscounted. Oh no! <laughs> so I just, I just threw it away because I was basically gonna win at that point. It was like, ah, I don't care. So then I just next time I didn't, I didn't beat the time, but I still finished it. it was just like, yeah, it's so fun. <laughs> it hasn't changed. It's great. The whole level was just a goddamn masterpiece in design. Um, even the 
the bonus level is just insane as well. Oh which I yeah, really much appreciate. Yeah, there were certain ways. I think in watching Cat Icarus do it, he did it like in this. He did the part where you have to um, you're on the bottom and you have to make your way up to where the laser, the little robots are shooting the lasers, and he like jumped on the nitros and went boo like hitting the top uh, his head on the yes, top yes that's what i did i didn't know you could do it that way i'm like okay obviously you have to get rid of the nitros and then kind of come o- like, 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 walk yeah, away from the them normal way that's the same <laughs> way of doing it <laughs> the god level way yeah of doing it, it you didn't guys even did. occur to me that you could do that so it's <laughs> like i'm just gonna do this incredibly intricate bullshit way <laughs> and i will make it work <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, just the just a quick thing. I have ten minutes. Um, okay, that's I've fine. Got to, I I didn't realize. Uh, so, uh, if there's anything you want to specifically talk about, um, uh, please do say. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's see. The one thing I want to say is that um, I like how a lot of these little bits don't. Uh, overstay their welcome. So, like, that gauntlet is just that back half of the level um, for mm-hmm. both Scene Double and for um, Cortex Castle. Um, and it's not a very long gauntlet. It's just two pieces because you do get a resting point in between. And I think there's even yeah. a there's even a checkpoint. So, like, you're good. And it's just... So you have enough tries to get it right. And then once you want to go for, like, you know, um, the perfect relic or whatever else or all crates even, because there are a couple of hidden crates in there, um, then you'll figure out how to work it out and you can do it. And the same thing goes for, which I really appreciate, I mentioned this super briefly in my top 10, the um, backtracking portions, the the split pathways. There are only like two in two different levels that are worlds apart, and they're just very short segments. You can, when you come up to the, that fork in the road, you can see both sides almost in their entirety. And then you can choose where you want to go and then come back around the other way. So it's much like OG Crash in that aspect, but then they're very shorter segments. Uh, they're easily backtrackable, you know? Um, so it's not as aggravating as people were like, oh my god, I have to do a death row and then come back down the other way and then go back again. And it's like these long segments where you have no idea what's coming up. Even as a veteran, I still sometimes have trouble with... Uh, certain segments like that in Crash 2 or whatever, like, it's like, oh my god. Yeah, it's really, like, because it's, like, you pretty much have to backtrack, and you just can't see it, and it's just, like, it, it, like, running away from a boulder is fine, because it's designed to be moving backwards, but, yeah. like, going down the backwards, down, like, behaving or whatever. That was what I was thinking I of, yeah. It's behaving or the other one. Yeah. Um, like, it, like, doing that is just, uh, is really agonizingly difficult um but i'll tell you what is agonizingly difficult the colored gem path in the final world oh, oh my god <laughs> oh my god oh that oh boy like that level the first time took me i think an hour and 20 minutes to beat and i didn't realize that i'd missed two crates in that path i was like oh my god i have to go through it again like and it's it's really interesting um because and like no one else is really gonna share the same sentiment as I do uh with this, but with my job being putting out content um I, what I wanna do is I want to put have it all ready for minute one of day one or whenever the embargo ends, yeah, and I wanna have like I wanna be like, okay, well, here's the first part, here's all the bosses, here's all the cutscenes, here's this, here's that, is this, and like. Ideal in an ideal world, I would like to have absolutely everything done. That did not happen because the game's huge. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's no way. I'm like, like very early on, it became apparent to me. I was just like, right, I don't need to get all the gems. I just need to make sure I have all the color gems. I need to make sure I have beaten Cortex, and I need to make sure like the the cutscenes, with the exception of the bonus cutscenes, are there. Like, I just need to make sure all of this is ready because, mm-hmm. like, I don't. I don't know what the rules are on talking about review copies and when we got them, but I'm not going to say when, but we did not have a lot of time. Yeah, it's true. We had a very short amount of time. So we had to... And, like, when I'm doing a game that I've been given a review copy of, uh, and I can't stress this enough, thank you to anyone who gives me a review copy. Like, sure. never take yeah. a review copy for granted. 
Yeah. Like, even if you're a huge channel and you feel like you have earned it or deserve it, you don't. They do not have to give you one. It is a privilege. Exactly. Um, like the like we don't have we don't have guides. <laughs> so like finding the crates <laughs> in a real grind took me an hour <laughs> because I had no idea where they were. <laughs> like stuff like that. And there's like it is the case of um I had to uh play, record, edit, and upload for about 18 hours a day, and then sleep, and then continue the next morning, and sometimes more than that, depending, like, I, I didn't get much sleep, because I'm, like, the thing is, when you finish working for that amount of time, you're not tired, you're still buzzing, and, like, you've just got off work, so, yeah. like, you still need a little bit of downtime before you can actually fall asleep, and you're not really given that luxury, <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, it, it was quite an intense... Uh, experience, but yeah, like my my point being, uh, like trying to beat that gauntlet, I was just like, right, why well, need to get it done? Because this is a video that could do really well, mm-hmm. but I need to find where the golden gems and not the golden gem, the coloured gems are, because <laughs> they're really really well hidden, and I don't even know which levels they're in, and I need to beat this gauntlet, and I just need to nah, nah. like <laughs> like all of it, sort of like. It didn't drive me insane because, like, that's that's unfair. Uh, but it was just it's 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 scary because you never know how it's gonna go. Um, yeah, and you you always hope it's gonna go well. You've like any any content creator, you're against thousands of other content creators. You've got to just hope that somehow you're the one for the YouTube algorithm pro- provides the gift to. Um, and if if you are that one of the lucky few, then that's amazing. Um, I think that because I was lucky enough to get the game early i was able to put out a video like the the hardest levels because i played them um uh and i i knew how to speak about them so like because i was able to bring that video out so early it actually did really really well uh and i'm very proud of that video um nice and yeah it's just it's it's just a re- it's really interesting like the the player versus quote-unquote youtuber um yeah aspect of things like there's a there's a there's a very different experience that uh that we will go through, uh, and it's something that no one if you don't make videos, um or stream or whatever you won't really see it uh or mm. necessarily understand it. Like another another factor is like just doing a stream even if it's for a couple of hours is surprisingly exhausting. Like oh, it destroys sure. yeah. your stamina because there's just so much you have to focus on. Um. And it's the same with recording uh, and editing and whatnot. Like it all, it all like compacts and just is. It's yeah, it is just surprising. Um, and it's something you only really learn uh, once you start doing it. Um, and that's that's specifically like commentary. Um, I think it's much easier if you're just doing it silent because you can play it from the comfort of wherever you want and you don't have to think about as many things. And like, it's it's just it's a really interesting divide. Um, but it was, it was a really great experience to be able to play it so quickly, yeah. <laughs> and like, like it was, it was just fun. Like, and sure, frustrating at points, but but fun. Like it's it's a, it's an honor and a privilege to, uh, not just get something early, but also be able to create that uh, content early, um, because mm-hmm. it's like uh, there are a lot of people who actually will really appreciate it. Um, and it's really nice to see that, uh, in the comments. Um, and, and it's also nice to see people's thoughts on, uh, like what their experience with the game was. Um, cause like you, every, you get people who've like, were holding out and watching stuff and then they got the game, uh, maybe a couple of days later or for Christmas or whatever. Um, and then they come back and just like, Oh, I love this level. And it's like, Oh, that's awesome. Like, I'm, I'm so glad. Like it's like that, that kind of stuff is is probably the best part of uh of making content you you get you get a a real um uh i guess camaraderie with the comments yeah. um even even if you don't necessarily respond to it like you've you've got the same the same vibe that you that you share which is quite nice yeah i mean it's like a connection I mean, it's it's being able to finally get to talk with those who are watching you about like oh here's what's going on with this and then you get to just mellow out with them. 
But I, I definitely understand the whole... Now, I mean, I'm a, I'm a way smaller channel, so, like, I don't... This isn't my job. I would like for it to be, but it's not. And for you, it is, which is awesome. And I, I aspire to that. And, um... It will happen. <laughs> and the thing, though, that I still put myself on a schedule sometimes. I'll... Especially right now. Something... Some, like... It's not, like, in a negative way, but I'll say it in this analogy way. Like, some uh, Scrooge thing kind of clipped in my head where I just went... I want to do stuff. Like, I was really bummed out from last year for obviously numerous reasons, but it's like, from the creative aspect, it, it was there, but it wasn't there. I, I was still doing stuff, but it was more streams and videos, and the content wasn't as um, fleshed out as it could be, or it wasn't as varied as it could be. And something about the new year coming about sparked something in me where, where I just got my motivation back, and now, like, I'm trying to put myself on schedules, trying to get more bandicast out, trying to get more discussion videos and other things out, trying to go back to older content and revisit some of that stuff, little mini series and things I've done in the past. So like putting yourself on schedules, and especially when it comes to playing games, whether it's for the content or to even record B-roll for an upcoming video, it, it can get kind of uh, overwhelming. But when it comes like even to the realm of Crash, no, I understand like, yeah, especially for Crash because you still have to learn those levels, whether you've, you know, you're coming back to it a day later or a month later. Uh, you have to remember, oh, crap, this level's kind of long, and I have to remember where the crates are, if that's what I'm showing off in my video, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, it's a process. <laughs> yeah, and you, um, it's worth you've it. got a fantastic channel here. Um, you, Thank you. You create some incredible content. I look forward to seeing uh, how rapidly your channel grows, because it will, like, guaranteed. I appreciate it. As someone watching you from a long time ago, like that's that's really cool coming from you. <laughs> Good vibes. So, what are you uh, what are you hoping for this year? I want Crash Bash two. <laughs> uh, uh, please. Uh, crash Boom Bang on Nintendo Switch, please. Did you just say Crash Boom Bang? How? Go <laughs> find uh, uh, What are you? <laughs> oh. oh, that's your trigger word. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Oops. So yeah. Oh no. 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 I'm... So you you said the word. I'm just gonna jump out window. Excuse me. I'll oh, put sound effect in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How has Party Hard been going, by the way? <laughs> he jumped out the window. Or my oh God. Came out. Sorry. Oh, there. Sorry, sorry. I've died. I've ascended now. Okay. Cool. <laughs> If they did remake out, yeah. Crash Boom Bang, though, like that would be, be the biggest glow up, but also the biggest meme game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh my god. Uh, okay, no, serious. <laughs> this is gonna be a little bit of a shorter podcast. Um, serious answer, real quick. Um, I really want to see what those little teases are up to with the little Wumpa League stuff. Uh, that TV image, uh, those are things I've been covering in Crash discussion videos for a while now. Um, seeing as the Crash Twitter did kind of go like, oh, ready for the new year, winky face? I'm like, okay, they, they're going to try and prime us up for some stuff for this year. Um, like we said uh, in the beginning of the podcast, yeah, Crash's 25th is this year, so uh, I think that they've got some pretty big planned, hopefully. Um, it's kind of hard to say right now. I don't know if the next Crash game, whenever that is and whatever that is, will be a direct sequel to this game, or if it'll try and um, fill in some of those uh, bits of the plot that were just kind of left hanging after, like, Mind Over Mutant or something, at least for the space theme, you know? Um, I'm not really sure, man. Yeah, I uh, I hope we... I, I think they'll have a bunch of stuff prepared. Um, like, maybe we get an expansion to Crash 4 in some way, maybe more Crash Team Racing stuff. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say, but I think they'll produce a bunch of content for the 25th. I don't know if we'll necessarily get a new game. If we do, cool, but I suspect it will probably be something like Crash Bash because it, will, it won't be as high-end, um, no disrespect. Um, like no, it, but yeah. It, you, like it will, it will be something that's easier to make, not easy, easier, um, and and less time consuming. Uh, but it would, it would be cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. And obviously, there's Spyro Four, and that's that's all, that's all incredible. It's, it's, uh, it's very exciting to be a Crash and Spyro fan. Yep, that's a whole other can of worms. Like there could be a whole other separate podcast just for speculating on Spyro and talking about how sure they could. Sure, uh... will be. <laughs> looking forward to it. I'll be on episode two of the Spyrocast, please. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> yes, Miharu's gonna start that again up at some point. <laughs> uh, fun stuff. Um, well, I think is, is there's anything else that you want to mention real I quick? I unfortunately have to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, one more time for everything you've got right now. Uh, go ahead and plug yourself super quickly. Is there anything you're doing at this moment that's a little bit different from when you were last on, or is there still ongoing stuff you've got going? So at the end of the year, I produced a bunch of stuff that I'm really proud of. Um, the first one is Game Questions, the ultimate gaming quiz, uh, which was um, a comedy quiz show that's around two hours long, uh, based around questions from 2020 news, uh, gaming news specifically. Um, and it's just two hours of just non-stop funny moments and it's just it's great um but it's also you know it's a quiz so um by all means uh watch it and uh and see if you can beat the uh five contestants in the video uh, i also did a 20 best games of 2020 uh which was an opinion piece uh, it's, i think around 40 something minutes um and it's you know my favorite games of the year and i really enjoyed it um I've got a best of 2020, which is just the funniest or best moments um, from me uh, throughout all of 2020. It's over eight hours long, um, but it is good. It's a great video. It's got a bunch of stuff like the um, the uh, Skylander Spurs Adventure developer commentary with um, Toys for Bob. So there's, there's a lot of um, real cool um, interview moments as well as uh, just funny moments. Um, I always cover new games, so if you want to see content on new stuff, then head on over. And uh, I've got a series called Party Hard, where um, me and my friend Emil are going through every party game ever made. And it is... there's a lot of them. <laughs> but we're, um, we're doing some really obscure Japanese party games, and they're just really funny. So it's uh, it's worth a watch. Um, yeah, just head on over to this channel. I've got a bunch of playlists, which has all this stuff in. Like, I've got reviews, I've got um, little... Uh, like Teal's Tales is a playlist, I, I call it, um, and it's, you know, the uh, side things which are about just different opinions, I guess, um, and I've got play playthroughs and whatnot, yeah, just there's just a bunch of good stuff, so if you want to check that out, I'd very much appreciate it, and thank you very much for uh, allowing me to just brag about myself for a couple minutes. <laughs> But thank you very much uh, for inviting me on this wonderful podcast. Um, and I look forward to seeing the other episodes. It's really cool. Yeah, thanks for being back on. It was awesome. So until next time, thank you guys so much for listening. I'm Mark. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a teal boy. <laughs> and we'll see you guys later. I'll let you go, man. Take care.